Hi everyone and welcome to this video. This is the one I believe you've all been waiting for. This is going to be introducing Solar V3. And um, just a little bit before Solar V3 and its predecessors before I talk about it. So version 1, if you remember rightly, was up here. And I had this board and there, are, there were little boxes uh, screwed to this board. I had sensors in there. I had um, voltage dividers. Um, different current sensors, the ACS715, uh, ACS758, etc. And uh, that was Solar V1. And uh, after a while, I upgraded all of those things. And then there was Solar V2. And that was over here on this board. And this is the ESP8266 or a Node MCU. And I had a, a Nano here, I had a TFT screen here. Uh, that TFT screen actually is not working at the minute, but I'll use it when I can when I get a new one. And um, and I had different things here like the um, RS four eight five to TTL converter. That was V two. Now here's V three, and um, there's quite a lot to talk about really. So there it is. It looks an absolute mess. But anyway. Um, So what exactly is Solar V3? I mean, and what is this about? Well, this Solar V3 is a control system and it controls my solar panel system. So you might be thinking, well, control it in what way? Well, it gets data from lots of different sensors. Um, like I just mentioned about the sensors in V2. Um, it gets the data and it logs it and it also makes decisions based on that data. So what decisions is it going to make? It needs to decide whether it's going to power my system from the mains or from solar. and um, Or potentially not power anything. It, both contactors could be off. Um, so in order to make those decisions, what does it base its decisions on? It bases its decisions on light, so the amount of light, and that's from a sensor. And it also bases its decisions on the current battery voltage. So, if circumstances are favourable, then it will go for solar, or otherwise it will choose mains. And the reason I do this is because I want to protect the batteries. I don't want to place heavy loads on the batteries when they're not going to be charged up straight away, because they tend to sulphate and the batteries won't last very long if I, if I do that. So, what I do is, I just use them kind of like as a buffer, and I get solar to charge them back up straight away. Right, what data does this thing log then? Well data it logs are PV voltage, so that's the solar voltage, PV current or PV amperage, which is the current which is being drawn from the panels, it stores battery voltage and battery charge current. So when it comes in through the, ch the charge controller it gets stepped down and um, of course the current will go up. So if you if you get an amount of wattage and you lower the voltage, the current will go up for the same amount of wattage. So um, it also stores the battery amperage out. So that's the amperage coming out of the batteries um, into the inverter. It also stores light and it, it's, it uses the lux measurement in order to do that. And it also stores some other things like um, whether AI is on, um, AI, I'll tell you about that, uh, maybe in another video. AI is generally the the artificial intelligence system that the uh, ESP uses. Um, it also stores whether the inverter's on as well. Um, and of course it also stores the power source. Uh, so, is the current power source mains, is it solar, or is it nothing? It stores all this too. And what does it do with the log data? Um, primarily, it saves all of the data to my server, and um, and then from there, I use it to learn. Basically, I use it to see patterns to learn more, because with data you can learn a lot. Um, but but basically, my website reads it from my server and displays data on it. Um, I'll put a link to my server. Oh well, not a link to the server. I'll put the link to my website 
in the description and maybe you can take a look at that, that uh, website yourself. Okay, now I'm going to show you a bit, close, uh, a bit closer up so you can see what's going on. So how does this thing actually work? Well to start with it needs data, so how does it get the data? It gets the data from a lot of different places, but the first place I'll start is the charge controller. So in this charge controller here, you can see there's an Ethernet cable coming out of it. And with this charge controller made by EP Solar, you can see that a solar tracer, um, it uses a protocol called Modbus, and you can basically manipulate data through that. So, um, it uses the RS-485 protocol, and so I've got an RS-485 um, module right here, and the module is connected to an Arduino. So, um, I did want the data to go straight through to the ESP32, but I, I spent hours on it, and I just couldn't get it to work. So it goes to the Arduino, and the Arduino pulls it and deals with it. And then what happens is it passes that data over by a serial. You can see this blue wire here, this long one. It passes that over to the ESP32 there and the ESP32 does what it needs to do with it. Right, so um, about the current, I said that it measures current. So actually the first thing, the first thing is from here it gets several things. It gets the PV voltage, it gets the PV amperage, it gets the uh, the battery voltage and it also gets the battery charge amperage. But going over here, how can it get the battery current that flows from the batteries to the inverter? Well that's nothing to do with the charge controller, that's to do with this. So I use this ADS1015 here, and this is a 12-bit ADC. So the 12-bit ADC is excellent, it's really good. It's an I squared C device and it goes to the SP32 just there. And um, in that I use differential mode, so I get uh, the two wires from the shunt there, the voltage drop, remember it's a tiny voltage drop, and I basically bring both the ground and the signal wire, if you, if you want to call it that, into here, and this device here measures the difference between the two. And finally, uh, there's a light sensor, and it's the BH1750. Uh, and this outputs, again it's an I2C I device, a 3.3 volt thing, and this outputs via I2C, um, again to the ESP32. Okay, I suppose the important bit is controlling. And the artificial intelligence of uh, this chip which I burnt on, actually controls this automatically. But there are also four buttons. Um, you can see three there and there's one here. And these four buttons do different things. The first one, which is one here, turns artificial intelligence on or off. So if I just go over to the serial monitor of the PC, sorry the laptop, you can see it there outputting all this stuff. Now if I press the artificial intelligence button it'll switch it on or off. So there it's on, I'll switch it back off, and it's off. And um, that's what that does. The second button is to switch the power source. And the power source um, basically controls two transistors, which you can see here. These are TIP41C transistors. Sorry about the shaking on the camera. Um, they control the contactors. So if I switch from one to the other, there you go. So that's like my, uh, powered by solar now, sorry, mains now, and then solar switch back over, so that's manual control and it says on here, you know, switch power source it's power source 2, power source 1 and the third button, which is one here this controls the inverter now, the wires aren't long enough at the minute I've hacked into this little box here so I can uh, remotely switch this thing on and off via a microcontroller I've hacked into the wires but I haven't, I haven't really finished it off and basically a, um, a solid state relay powers that. So I'll press the button and again it comes on the screen as being changed. 
and if I look over here you can see that the red light is on so I'll turn it back off now and that's the inverter off so obviously there's uh, two points here which would uh, short the circuit together and therefore switch the thing on and um, that's the controlling side done ok now power the whole thing is powered by this buck converter here and 20, well 24 volts around about goes in and around about 5.5 volts goes out and 5.5 volts goes into one of these lines here on the breadboard and the 5 volts or 5.5 volts go straight into the V-in pin on the SP32 there's a capacitor as well there to um, to help stabilise it. I found that the SP32 is really fussy when it comes to power, so you've got to, you've got to be a bit um, it's a bit fiddly. But um, but there you go. The rest of everything else is powered from five volts too, pretty much. Apart from the light sensor, which is three point three volts, and the three point three volts comes from the ESP32 itself, which you can see there. Um, and there you go, so that's how it's powered. The contactors, uh, they get 24 volts from the main uh, battery area down here. And they're both parallel together. And the switching is done on the low side via these transistors. And um, as regards power, that's pretty much all there is to it. I thought just before I'd um, finish with the video, I thought I'd just show you a close up of the serial data which comes into my laptop. So, this is on non AI mode, or in other words, uh, override mode, and um, this is what comes in. So, you can see it says uh, qualifying data, that's the data it's receiving from the Arduino Nano. Then you can see TCP sent, that's the data which it's sending to my server. And if I do different things, like uh, try and manipulate it, I'll turn the inverter on, for example, or off, or whatever. You can see that it says INV1 on. I'll do it again, INV1 off. And then, same with the power source, change the power source. Power source 2, power source 1. And um, I can also use the other button to shut it down. So, press that, everything's off. It switched everything off. And um, if I... Take, if I put AI on, you can see that now things change a little bit on the serial monitor and now with AI on it continually checks and decides, it's well artificial intelligence, it decides um, you know what the environment is and should solar be on, should the inverters be on or should we off, be off um, mains, how should it work and it, it decides so it gets the data it looks you can see that it looks at the light it looks at the voltage and it makes a decision so if it's off and it needs to be on it does what it needs to do if it's on and it needs to be off again it turns it off and um, and that's solar v3 Just before I stop the video, I thought it would be a good idea to just show you close-ups of these um, components. So, we'll start here. So there's the cable that comes from the charge controller. goes through to the RS485 module. Then it goes to the Arduino, the Arduino Nano. Then via serial, it goes over to the ESP32. Then back over here, we've got the light sensor. We've got the ADS1015. We've got the transistors which control the contactors. I've actually got a buzzer and a capacitor. The capacitor smooths out the power and the buzzer uh, gives me indications as to if there are any problems or not. Uh, there are the buttons again. The power supply. It's technically not a power supply and it's just a butt converter. But there you go. And there's the relay. So anyway, this project has taken me a long time to um, to sort out. I had that many things to do, but anyway, I hope you like the video, and thank you for watching. Bye.